I'm such a big fan. I'm so excited about this. Um, so I'm just going to ask you some of the questions about Accident Man, which is just amazing. The Hong Kong action in it is something else. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, that's great. I'm glad you like it. I loved it. I watched it three times over the weekend. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Mummy's just hired me to protect you, okay? Well, I'm not safe with you. You are a magnet for psychos. You look like a melted Ben Affleck. I just thought I just thought it was amazing. But um I was, I wanted to ask you how personal a project both accident men men films were for you. Or are for, are yeah. for the the most personal because I was 14 when I got the comic book and I loved it. And I just kept this comic book for ages. The dog ate it and everything. And I always thought, man, somebody needs to make this into a film. And they never did. And I guess I secretly wished it could be me, but I never really believed it would be. And then as I got, you know, established as an actor, I thought to myself, I wonder if I can get the rights to Accident Man. And I, I managed to do it. The creators, Tony Skinner, Pat Mills gave it to me. And uh, we wrote the script with my best friend, Stu, one of my best mates from school. And so, you know, that's as personal as it can get. And then we got it made at Sony and it was perfect. It took us a bit longer to get the sequel made for, you know, various reasons, pandemic included. But yeah, it's the most personal film films that, that I have because that's, it's that's, something that goes back cool. into my teenage years. Yeah, that's, that's just a... Uh... Just amazing. I was speaking to Mike Leader. Um, about, oh, yeah. Yeah, because I was very nervous about doing this. Um, but All right, don't be nervous. I'm going to settle into it. Sorry for being um, such a fan of Quail because I really am. Uh, you're credited as fight coordinator on this as well, working with Andy Long. Can you tell us what it was like to work with Andy and to be in that role for this film? Tim Mann was going to be the fight coordinator like the first one, but then he got another job and he, and he took it. That's the way it goes. Um, so we had somebody else step in and then they had another job. And so we ended up all sort of mucking in together. We previewed a lot of the fights in, in London before going to Malta. It wasn't cost effective to get Andy to come over and do the whole thing uh, uh, because you have to put him up in a hotel and everything, you know, trying to save money. So Andy choreographed the end fight and the fight with Sarah and Peter and, you know, came up with the angles for that and everything. And then everything else was done by a, a bunch of us all mucking in. So I did more choreography on this film than I've probably ever done because I normally got somebody doing it for me and then I'll put my two cents in and have, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have an opinion and it will be changed. Uh, but yeah, I, we all, we all mucked in. And the, the the directors, specifically George, George and Harry Kirby, but George, he is a stuntman. And he, uh, I met him on Doctor Strange, uh, double in Benedict Cumberbatch, he was. And he sometimes will even hold the camera because he understands the choreography at a level where you yeah. can do all that. that. That's why the fights are at a, a, a very high level. Did you ask for the Kirby brothers to be involved? Did you personally ask for them to be involved? Or... Yeah, it was my decision. And happily, Sony... And my producing partner, Craig Baumgarten, uh, they agreed with me, but I found them. They had this uh, short film that they gave to me, which I thought was amazing. Did a great job, and I knew they'd be perfect for Accident Man. And um, Sony and Craig were like, yeah, go for it. We'll support yeah, you. you. Could you work with them on, what's it, Doctor Strange? Would you have made, what did you do? George know? was the stunt double for Benedict Cumberbatch on, on Doctor Strange. Harry doesn't do stunts. But the both of them together, they have a real um, understanding of, of, you know, shooting action. Yeah, because there's a lot. I mean, from I've never been with a film like, especially a Western film, that gets moving so quickly, and the fight scenes are so intensely long as well. Um, mm. there was a lot. Um, one of my favorite fight scenes in it is with Bo Fowler as Poco. Yeah, I thought he was absolutely amazing and very yeah. scary. 
I've scary, never scary good. I'm glad I'm glad he's scary because I'm not sure if he's scary or funny. <laughs> <laughs> if it can be both, that's perfect. So his his whole character and not I was just like, well, this is actually kind of freaking me out a little um a little bit but well, he, he brought a lot to the part. I had written with Stu this crazy maniacal, you know, killer cra- clown off the wall, just nuts. But he brought pathos to the role. He brought this whole deep layered thing that he's got going on where because he doesn't feel any pain, he longs, he has a void in him and he longs for this pain. And if only the greatest assassin in the world, Mike Fallon, might be able to give him some pain, maybe he can feel human. And the way he plays it and the choices he made was just great, great acting. He's very talented. And of course, you know, does all of his own stunts and fights as well. Just brilliant, brilliant actor. That whole scene was just so intense, and I was actually wound it back. I found myself being a little kid again, again and actually winding it back a few times. What I did with Jackie Chan movie yeah. or Yoon Byu, just to see the actual choreography in it, because it just it, everything just flowed so so well for the whole film. Um, how did you like working with Sarah Chan for the film? Because her character is just brilliant. The humour between you and her is great yeah. from the start when she gets introduced into it. It reminded me, I don't know if I should say it, a little bit like Pink, uh, Pink Panther in a way, you know? Bla- blatant rip-off, you can say it. I blatantly rips it off. But, you know, you're the generation that will know that film very well. And I think a lot of kids growing up now, they probably think that Steve Martin is uh, Inspector Cl- Clouseau, right? Yeah. They they may not have seen those old films, which I highly recommend. And this Peter Sellers is so amazing in that role and those films. I love them to bits. But I just thought this is a great opportunity to bring that Cato, to have her play a Cato. You know, we'll make a female, we'll update it for the modern age. Um, but because he's got this post-murder tension issue, and he, in the first movie, he's clobbering people in bars to get rid of it. Perfect to have some something like that going on where she's going to attack him when he least expects it. And she did a great job. And she was a tough part to cast. I have to thank Mike Leader for telling me to look at Sarah. And I did. And she's perfect for the role. And she, you know, pretty much steals the movie. So it's it's brilliant. It works out great. I just loved about the chemistry between between the both of you on, on screen. The humor in the whole film in both in both films is great. But what you did with the first one, I think everything's just been cranked up for the second one. It's from um, just, I've just noticed your t shirt. That's oh, brilliant. You're what? <laughs> I wasn't sure Amazing. to wear it. I was trying to find my King of the Kickboxers t shirt, but I couldn't find it because I know you're a big fan of it. Oh, that would have been good as well. I'm such a huge fan of it as well. And I was just like, I well, that, that this film, the Accident Man movies, honestly, in my mind, it's a it's like I wanted it to be like a no retreat, no surrender film or King of the Kickboxers. And it, what I mean by that is when I was a kid, I was watching them and they had great fight sequences and everything. And I love that. Yeah. But they're just great fun, weren't they? Yes. Just just entertaining. It, even when there wasn't any fights, they were entertaining. Sometimes for the wrong reasons. You Sometimes you weren't <laughs> laughing with them, you're laughing at them. But that was essentially what I want these movies to be like, just highly entertaining and great fights. That's that's the main thing about both, both films. So they're just a fun fast filled ride of martial arts film if, if if you're new to the genre you're gonna love them if you're not so new to it like me and just love the films anyway i think these are just some of the best and probably for me the most enjoyable martial arts film i've watched this year i'm a professional killer and yeah it's a dirty job I'm happy to get my hands bleeding filthy for the right price. Needed to keep my head down after what happened back in London. So I grabbed my fake passport and hopped on the first flight to anywhere, which turned out to be Malta. There's more people need killing in this corner of the world than I can keep up with. I might be able to help you out. This is our lab where he trials all of his new techniques and where I can have a bash of seeing if they're actually going to work in the real world. <laughs> Go! How'd you find me, Ray? I heard that you've got a nice little learner going on down here. Nothing we got going on down here is going to bother you. You have bothered me. No pain, no gain, eh, mate? Ah, come on. 
Oh, Best uh, martial arts uh, film 2022, yeah? Are yeah. we going there? Yeah. On, honestly, I liked it that much. I, I just thought it was amazing. I mean, it had everything that I wanted in an actual film. It was great to see like um, Fred come back into it as well. Yes. Yeah. Talk about that. bromance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his stuff was a, was really good, but it made your character a little bit more human to appreciate. Likeable. Yeah, you weren't so mechanical like you were in the first one, and I love the first yeah. one as well because of the one of the things that stood out to me when I was watching it was when you were by your girlfriend's graveside, was the play on the Get Carter music. Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, because Jess is a big fan of of Get a Carter. Yeah, so it, it was there because you know Sean Murray, the, the composer, very well. I do remember them saying that actually. Yeah, I just do, do, love that do, do. Yeah, and it was stuck in my head, my uh, my head, even when I was uh, when I was watching the second one. Do you think now? This is a personal product. I mean, hopefully we all see Accident Man Three, and I hope it's going to be a belter because the second one is as well. Um, do you yeah. think that you're going to move on to maybe directing anytime soon? I'd like to. I need to find the correct project. Um, I guess I'm putting it off a little bit because once you make that step, you know, it, it better be good. Otherwise, you won't get to do it again. So I've got some ideas. I've not come across as... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll get there. I'll get there soon enough. Can I can I can I suggest something? For Go on. Can you, yeah. can you do maybe Ninja Free Blood Brothers with Lauren Avedon? Now I would think that would be <laughs> Ninja Three Blood Brothers with Lauren Avedon. Yeah. No, great. Great. You know, there's part of me that doesn't want to direct a full-on martial arts film because then you you know, I've I've had a whole career of being pigeonholed as the B movie martial arts guy, if you like. And on some level, even though I'm just a geek of a fan of martial arts films and I know it inside out and I'm I direct the hell out of it, there's a side of me that doesn't want that to be my first movie that I direct because maybe that pigeonholes me. So I don't know. There's all those things to think about. Yeah. Um maybe something a bit more character based to begin with, and then I can go full on crazy. Okay. Once I'm established. I think the um, the, the speeches in the film, the monologue, especially the one at the end between yourself and Ray Stevenson, is so heartfelt. How much time did you put into actually writing that scene? Was some of it ad libbed um, a little bit between you and Ray? No, it was written. Uh, I think in the moment I might have like said something else or extra. Um, but, you know, look, it's so hard on these films because me, I'm so, obviously, I prioritise the action. And so I never give myself a lot of time to do the drama because, in my head, I'm taken away from the action. Yeah. And I want the action to be great, but I also want the story to work and the acting to be great and the whole film in general to be great. But there's always that weighing up the scales of dedicate this much time to action, dedicate this much time for, to, to the acting. So I'm shooting myself in the foot as an actor a lot of the time because I want to get the action. So inevitably, you only get like one, two takes, three maybe for a, for a scene. You've got to move on because you haven't got enough time in the day. Yeah. So you just got to be prepared and able to deliver those acting moments as well as all the action, which is really tiring, as you can imagine. I can imagine. And, uh, you know, it's not easy making these sorts of films. Please wish somebody would give me a bigger budget and a bit more time. Is it dead? He is now. All right, Mike, nice weekend. Not really, mate, no. You tend to stand out in 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 everything that you're actually in. You do tend and you do tend to start uh, stand out, even in that small little bit okay. day shift or in section eight, which I've watched as well. You do you always do stand uh, stand out, you know. But the oh, drama, geez, mate, I appreciate that. 
the, the, the drama scene I felt between and the speeches between yourself and Ray were some of the best acting I think you've had. I've seen you do just my per, just my personal opinion of it because it was just it just yeah, made the nice. film because the action is absolutely top notch. But you have to have a little bit of a little bit of drama to get the more the motivation behind Mike and that whole speech about friends and um and everything else and heart and having a connection. That connection was really quite moving, I thought, to be honest. Oh good. Well thanks man. I appreciate the kind words. I'm loving it. You love the movie. Spread the word and I hope uh, people everyone else can see it and enjoy it. <laughs>